and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for our first deck here on a new series that we're going to be doing each Monday in August. We're going to be doing rope Rotation Proof Monday. So that's what we have scheduled for this month. So this month on Mondays, I'm going to be making decks that do not have cards that rotate out. So if you're worried about rotation that's going to happen in a, about seven weeks from now, the end of September, then uh, you don't have to worry about building these decks. So these aren't going to be maybe as good as the decks possibly can be because we're only using half of the card pool that's available in standard right now. But they're still going to be pretty good overall. And as we see here, our first deck that we have is the Orzhov Sacrifice deck that I've been playing some in regular standard. The only thing that we're really missing from the main deck uh, that was rotating out was Ravenous Chupacabra. So while Ravenous Chupacabra is a really good card, we can you know replace it with Seraph of the Scales and Doom Whisperer and things like that. And, and we can still basically get the same kind of deck. Um, one thing that that these decks are definitely going to struggle with is mana base uh, compared to our normal standard decks because we're not using any check lands. So you see here I have an extra one of each basic and I got some Scoured Barons in here, the Gain Life land. Um, that's definitely a downgrade and having a worse mana base can cost you games at times. But <clears throat> that's a, a risk we're willing to take here. For rotation proof Monday. So this is like the um, <laughs> thanks, Doster. Hey, Starbucks, doing good. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have just been asking about all the time is is rotation proof decks. So that's what we're doing. So we got I got four decks here that we're going to be playing today. Next Monday, I'll make another four decks and so on. So we'll have twenty total decks this month that will not include rotation the cards that rotate out, except for green with land or elf because land or elf is a common. And if you're playing green. Just, just craft four land war elves. You you should just have land war elves in your account. Um, but I'll even with those decks, I'll talk about if you really really don't want to use land war elf for some reason. I'll talk I'll talk about uh, how to replace them. Anyway, what we have here is Orzhov sacrifice. Uh, we're calling it sacrifice because we have a lot of cards that make either ourselves or our opponent sacrifice stuff. We have priests of forgotten gods, of course, which is just the the main engine of the deck. Well, I mean, I guess Soren's kind of the main engine, but those those two. Playcrafter makes us both sacrifice, and then Cavalier of Night, we sacrifice a creature for profit as well. Um, Liliana makes both players sacrifice too. So we got lots of sacrifice stuff going on in here. So we're a long we're we're a deck that's trying to play a long game and try to just grind down opponents. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, what we're going to kind of struggle with is we're probably going to struggle against Cape Shift. I got a couple Ashioks in here, but maybe I need to have more. But we, we have like the Legion's Ends also. Um, I honestly th thought about just not having the Ashioks though and just trying to uh, get like get some more like aggro hate in here and just try to um, try to win like the other matchups like your Vampire and your Espers and all your other stuff and not even worry about Cape Shift and just kind of punt that matchup. That's that's an option, um, you know. Like the Ashoks could be replaced with like Oath of Kaya, um, Noxious Grasp. Like there's there's a lot of other good cards in Orzhov colors that we could play. But all right, so with all these rotation proof decks to test them out, cool. Um, I'm going to be playing them all in our traditional constructed queue, and uh, we're going to be playing seeing. Playing them until we either win five or lose two, whichever happens first. So here we go. All right, first deck. So the um, we don't know the exact date when um, when rotation is going to happen. It's going to be around. I, if I had to like just guess, I would say around September. Uh, like 20th to the 24th somewhere in that range I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be right around there whenever um, I guess I could look at the schedule or sorry look at the calendar um, it's probably okay so that 20 my guess would be like that 23 to 27 week it's probably around there probably like 23rd 24th if if they have the same 
schedule of release they had the last set because we know that the pre-release for Th Throne of Eldraine is September 27, 28, 29. So I expect it to be on Arena before that. So it's probably like the probably like the 23, 23rd, 24th, something like that. All right, definitely mulliganing that. Oh, sorry. It looks like my my mic was. Thanks for letting me know. Looks like my mic was bumped, and so my volume was way down on my mic. Hopefully, is that better? So yeah, we'll keep this one. Um, I guess I'm getting rid of the second hundred witness. Yeah, if the if the sounds off like that, you know, just let me know. Sorry, that was. That was off. I wonder if, like, the recording for the YouTube recording, I wonder if, like, the volume's going to be really low and now really loud. Hmm. I guess, I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know. I guess I don't know if that, if, you know, moving the mic here affects the YouTube volume. I just don't know. What would we run over 4 4 Nickel Bolas and Grixis deck? Uh, yeah, playing two Liliana Dreadhordes, two Sarkins is a little too heavy. I would prefer Ug First, I would prefer Ugin over Sarkin anyway, because you're not really... Well, I guess you do have... I guess you do have... Uh, if I guess if you're playing Chandra's and Narset's, but... Still, no, I don't think you haven't... I don't really like Sarkin, basically. I know, I would rather just play Lilians and Nugans there. Anyway, um, that is that is maybe a little too heavy. Definitely, You definitely want Kefnets. Um, Enter the God Eternals could be something, so it's not all six drops, where Enter the God Eternals works very well with... Um, Kefnet as well, and that, that kind of helps you out against aggro a little bit and gives you, you know, like a creature and stuff. So that's a good option there. All right, looks like team or elementals here. But as far as as far <laughs> as far as four mana cards, um, nothing is particularly coming to mind. Like drawn from dreams, maybe that's you know that does a different thing, of course. As far as like four mana creature, like the best one in the formats, Rekindling Phoenix. To replace it, but obviously Rekindling Phoenix rotates out too, um, and so does Hostage Taker, and so does Chupacabra. So not exactly sure there. But those are maybe some options, like, like I said, like Enter the God Eternals. Um. I mean, Ral. Five mana Ral. I think I think five mana Ral is probably better than Sarkin. So unfortunately, we're adding two black with Priest. We don't get to cast Tithe Taker or play Crafter for that matter. No, I don't think Elves are going to be reprinted. Um, but yeah, I already, I mentioned that, but I'll talk about that also with, when we get to the green decks. But yeah, the green decks have Llanowar Elves because that card is just, it's a common and like, it's a common, you should craft it. You'll want it like for historic or other things, just, just craft Llanowar Elves. But if, if you really don't want to craft Llanowar Elves for some reason, or, you know, you really don't want to use four wild card, four commons on it, then I'll talk about other options, um, at that time. Uh, whenever we get to that deck. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, Elves is a power nine card in standard, that's true. They're returning a land back to, they control back to their hand. Well, that doesn't do anything to help them. Man, our deck's pretty sweet. I have to admit, our deck's pretty sweet. Alright, so we're playing against Teamer creatures with elemental stuff. So I guess Teamer elementals. Hmm. Masker Girl. Probably pretty good here. Masker Girl coming in. Um, I mean, if they have, like, Nyssa, like, Dispark's going to be really good against Nyssa. This, this is definitely a matchup where not having Ravenous Chupacabra hurts. We saw Sh Chandra's Ember Kitty. So maybe I go Legion's End. I want to take out one, one Dreadhorde General, the Doom Whisper. No, we'll keep the Doom Whisper. Let's take out one Dreadhorde General for the Masker Girl, and kind of keep it like this. I'll just keep like the one Legion's End. I don't know if that's something that I want too many of. No, I don't have any Kaya's Wrath in the side. I, I originally had them, but you know, had it like cutting down to fifteen. That was a card I ended up cutting. Um, but that, that's definitely an option. The more popular, like, these kind of green decks are, the better Kai's Wrath is. Um, again, the Ashioks in the sideboard are for Scape Shift, but Scape Shift is probably still a really tough matchup, even with those Ashioks. So, when, with how narrow that card is, you may, like, it's maybe just better sideboard equity just to not have the Ashioks, and that's something you could have, is have a Kai's Wrath in here instead. According to what's in standard, it's October 4th. Well, they're... They are not correct. Especially for Arena. Maybe that's correct for paper, but that's not that's not correct for... Like, that, that could be the correct date for paper, but that's not the correct date for Arena. So they didn't play a land. So play crafting away the Leafkin Druid would make some sense here. Yeah, we'll just do it. The set's going to be out on Arena a lot earlier than when uh, that rotation is taking in consideration for paper it's taking in consideration like the first week like the first Friday Night Magic that you'll be using the new set kind of thing which is after the pre-release weekend so in paper it's basically going to be like pre-release weekend then the next Friday is like the first F&M with it so that's the day that they're saying the rotation is but 
it will be out on Arena before pre-release. The last couple of sets have been out on Arena before the pre-release, like the week before. So, so that's a you know a couple of weeks before that first F and M. So yeah, it should be so it should be around like the twenty third, twenty fourth around around that time on Arena. And sacrificing Sarah for the scales to kill Cloudkin Seer like isn't even really a good value. I'm still doing it. Because that's our deck and our deck sweet. Just gonna sacrifice and kill all the stuff. Cavalier Knight is very good in this deck. Um, how you know you sacrifice the Cavalier Knight, it, go, it gets back uh, the Play Crafter, which makes them sacrifice another thing. With this deck's kind of built around Cavalier Knight with its uh, synergy with Midnight Reaper and Play Crafter, especially Play Crafter. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's basically what it was. We just made two creatures for Priest of Forgotten Gods while also killing the Cloudkins here. All right, ro rotation proof Mondays, starting off with a win. <laughs> Blood for Bones, Cavaliers. Not a bad idea. I'll take the Haunted Witness. That card makes our Priest of Forgotten Gods a whole lot better. Ooh. Yeah, this is... This actually doesn't match up very well for us, come to think of it. Silent Storm... Siren Storm Tamer does counter ab abilities that target you, so, like, this Priest targets that player... All right, so plan. We next turn we play play crafter. Uh, with the trigger on the stack, we sacrifice the hunted witness and the play crafter to the priest to make them sacrifice. And then we get the token from the hunted witness, and then we let play crafter resolve, and then they have to sacrifice from there. Hmm. Oh, do I not get to... Oh, I should have held full control. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. We can just sack this thing. It's still fine. Why would they sacrifice Siren Storm Tamer instead of this other thing? Because it's not a spirit? Yeah, the... The... Make a bunch of 1-1, one, one, like, crappy token deck. It's not ideal for me. To face. This didn't line up too well for us. I 
Alright, I'll take that. I'll take that. Draw land. Alright, let's go, Soren. I will have Get him. Of course, this remorseful cleric got rid of my graveyard, which is sad. Cost six mana. <laughs> Play crafter can be a lot more valuable than getting rid of little one ones, but it's what we're doing. With our life, I suppose. Hey, what's up, Yud? We need a Gola Sakama deck. <laughs> Embrace the bloodlust. <laughs> they definitely want. Looks like they definitely want to keep their hanged executioner around. No, Soren. May death find you quickly. Rotation proof means that we're playing with just cards that aren't rotating. Well, you can't Legion's End Hanged Executioner. You just can't. You can't target that. You can only target creatures with CMC 2 or less. And this has CMC of 3. Of course, we, we have the five lands, so we bottom the Liliana, and our next two cards, of course, are land, land. Making me kind of regret that. Hey, what's up, Denriel? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. Alright, we'll just destroy this Supreme Phantom. It's our second sub of the day. These darned hanged executioners, or not hanged executioners, sorry, uh, remorseful clerics. We have found a deck that is like a counter to my deck. A bunch of really crappy creatures that it's okay for them to sacrifice, and they also are good at getting rid of their graveyard. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. So let's get Masker Girl, certainly. And... So we're going to play more Legion's Ends, even though some of their more important cards cost three. I kind of like Bell Haunts here. What if we go, like, lots of Bell Haunts? Gains life, makes them discard. Cut the Play Crafters.
yeah, we were, we were dead if we top decked Liliana still. Um, maybe not with these bell haunts. Maybe not Soren. They're eating my graveyard. So eating my graveyard does make Cavalier of Night worse. We're bringing another fours and fives. Maybe that's the cut is Cavalier of Night. Okay, that's our cut. Hey, Whopper Stopper. Think about crafting some Legion's Ends, but I have the feeling that after Escape Shift, they're going to lose in value. It's just too... Maybe. We just don't know. Right now, the, the two best decks are Escape Shift and Vampires, and Legion's End is awesome against Escape Shift and Vampires. So I, I think it's worth it, but... I mean, Standard's going to completely change that rotation. It just always happens. Um, it's just too hard to say. Oh man, I've already explained the Llanowar Elves multiple times. I'll talk about the Llanowar Elves more whenever we get to the those decks. Just chill out. I'm already kind of regretting keeping this Midnight Reaper. Yeah, I don't think I should have kept the other Midnight Reaper. Looks like we would have just gotten more lands, though, so I wouldn't have had to play this turn. Right, this is like a perfect folly to my 75 that I have here. A bunch of really cheap creatures that they don't mind sacrificing, and they're all flying, and they're all very big. That was, and they have the the main deck graveyard hate also. They just come with, <clears throat> come with graveyard hate. Yeah, that would that was a terrible matchup. Hey, what's up, Zerf? So that's that's definitely a matchup where having Kaya's Rats in the deck is a necessity. Like, if that's a, a popular deck that you see at your FNM or whatever, you're seeing that deck online, getting Kaya's Rats in the deck, that's a necessity there. Hmm. So I'll try this over going to f going down to five.
What do, have, what do we have here? Tybalt's Rager? You know what this card is. <laughs> Whenever it dies, it deals one damage to any target. Okay. Looks like this could be a Cavalcade of Calamity deck. The one's the one power creature. I'll just take the trade that makes them spend their mana more. What? That was just unnecessary. Can't... Alright, we must be playing against a newer player here. There are things that are necessary, things that are not necessary. That would be classified as something that was not necessary. So I just want the lifelink here. <clears throat> if they spent, you know, if they have like six power here that kills the Soren, oh well. I mean, it. I'd prefer them not to, but. My friend is here to help your pain. Hmm. I am familiar with pain. So yeah, I could could have Legion's End the Devil and then killed the Tybalt with the Tight Thickers. Yeah, they're just killing the Tybalt anyway, so now we can still Legion's End the Devils. And this, this just uses my mana a lot better getting the Seraph in play. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't mad about... The, exactly. I wasn't mad about the Heartfire play there. I was just a little disappointed. Oh, uh, the kitty's like, I'm not a black and white kitty. We're playing a black white deck. There you go. <laughs> Waste your stamina. All these heart fires. Poor Soren. More Tibbles. The only thing to fear is well, I adore an audience. This doesn't seem like like we've drawn pretty well here that we've drawn the correct part of the deck. We haven't drawn our sacrifice cards. This doesn't seem like a matchup where we're gonna really want to be forcing the opponent to sacrifice too much. They're at nine, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can only do eight. Mm. Mm. Now I'm just getting another Sarah from play. Mayhem devil. My assistants are painfully sloppy. I 
All right. Yeah, the Simic Yoink deck is about stealing stuff from the opponent, so it's a mass manipulation deck. So it yoinks the cards away from the opponent. All right, so definitely Massacre Girl, and probably these Legion's Ends also. And get some Bell Haunts up in here. And we'll cut Plague Crafter and Priest. Gets me down to 58. Hmm. I'm thinking about these duresses. I'm thinking they look pretty good. Just the two. Maybe another over a lily. <laughs> the rotation proof Esper Hero isn't as good as regular Esper Hero. There's no no five mana to fairies and the mana base is pretty crappy. But it basically has everything else. All right, which one of these four drops am I cutting? I like all the four drops, but I gotta get rid of one. Um, I guess Seraph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's Soren. Nah, it can't be Soren. All right, Seraph. Hey, Daffodils, good afternoon. I know I could shock in and play the Haunted Witness, but it's not like I'm in any rush to play a Haunted Witness. Okay, never mind. I was in a rush to play a Haunted Witness. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I just didn't think the paying two life to get the Haunted Witness in play right then was the right thing to be doing. And I was told that I was incorrect. I got butchered. <laughs> got butchered. <laughs> Yeah, mistake, mistakes were made. Yeah. Hey, we get the Seraph back. How about that? Ooh, that's a good discard. That's a good discard by the opponent there. Gutter Bones, good choice. I'm not sure what the other card was, but that was a pretty good choice right there. All right, stabilizing. Looks like we stabilized. Oh, I'm sorry, kitty. There you go. Now the kitty's all happy. Good hearts. that bell haunt back and I take up the Soren. I also want Soren to stick a lot to st stay alive and stick around. Hmm. 
And the opponent's just throwing me a bone here. With these draw steps. All right, looking good for our sacrifice deck. The Seraphs have been very good for our deck. Maybe better than uh, Chupacabra overall, honestly. Yep, this one's over. Just kind of playing quickly. Finish this out. So they get to do two damage, two extra damage. So we're going to block like this and this. So my Seraph can't die. Yep, we got Cavalier of Knights in here. Got three of them. Victory. All right, two and one. Hey, proof of evolution. Thanks for getting that sub in here. That's our third sub of the day. You are amazing. Thank you very much. And of course, thanks everybody for getting the hype in the chat too. I always appreciate that. That card's not legal. It's from Dominaria. Can't play that thing. <laughs> Hunted Witness was was only printed like it was printed at the end of 2018. It seems like forever ago. I thought for sure Hunted Witness was rotating out. Like Hunted Witness, Midnight Reaper, Plague Crafter. I was like, ah, these cards are rotating out. And I was looking at the deck. I was like, wait a minute. None of these are rotating out. Uh, nope. Um, I'm not sure how... Like, this deck does have a lot of rares in it. A lot of rares and mythics. I don't know about like how expensive these cards are in paper. But there are a lot of rares and mythics in this deck. Hey, got another subscriber! Blinks! Coming in here. Thanks so much there, Blinks. Thanks, I reset. Hmm. I should probably play Seraph. Playing Seraph is a little rough, though, because we don't get to, like, with this Temple of Skrylance in our hand, we don't get to, like, play these five drops next turn unless we draw a land. 
We'll see if we do. Card's not bad. Hmm. This is better though. We'll sack the hunted witness, kill the knight of the Ebon Legion. Do I still sit back on D? Let's see, if they have another cast down and kill Cavalier of Night, I get Midnight Reaper back. Not really that bad of a bad of a scenario with attacking. Sweet, yeah. That, this is a this is a very fun deck to play, and yeah, you already have one Liliana and a Cavalier Knight. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know the exact price though. I mean, I I just don't know. Um, and Stream Decker only says the price in Magic on Magic Online. But exporting it to, like, MTG Goldfish, you'd be able to find the price pretty easily. That was an impressive showing there. Let's get these Legion's Ends in here. I guess I guess I want to get rid of Playcrafter and Priest again. Play Masker Girl and Bell Haunt instead. I mean, if they don't have legions, legions landing, then making them sacrifice isn't so bad. But with legions landing, it's pretty bad. But that's kind of like the way to make them to get rid of to get rid of Adanto Vanguard. It's like our only way. I guess we have Liliana's though. Do you think the options to buy cards directly via gems or gold should exist? Uh, it it does exist. It's you know it's kind of expensive, but it does exist because you do know like how many packs you need to open to get a to get a wild card, and then you have the wild card, then you can use the wild card for it. But I, I understand what you're saying. Um, it's it's an indirect way. An indirect way exists, but um, but that's the way the wizards wants it. I mean, it it'd probably be if you could just buy directly. Like, there's like a store where you just spend gems on cards. That's probably less profitable overall for wizards. Just a guess. Sanctum Seeker. So I'm playing Midnight Reaper here instead of Tithe Taker because 
with Midnight Reaper dying, like they they're gonna play the Legion's Lieutenant. These are two twos. They attack in, and I just trade Midnight Reaper for one of these things, which obviously is not a great trade for me. But that that's a better chance of me drawing land next turn, getting this extra draw step, because I do want to keep hitting my land drops for these things. That's not ideal. Not drawing any land. This card being a land would have been nice playing Legion's End and Tithe Taker. But yeah, if, they've, if they find a land in Sanctum Seeker, that's going to be rough. I think I need to do this so they don't flip the landing. It's a loaded hand. I think we're losing this. We couldn't really afford this land drop miss. Hey, Matthew. Yeah, these these basic land arts are available in the store. They're the card, the basic land card styles. These were the War of the Spark ones. Yeah. We really need to draw lands, but my opponent's thinking the same thing. What is what is that, Matthew? What's Age of Wonders? Never heard of that. What kind of game is that? Getting this creature out of there is good for me for a lot of reasons. You know, Sanctum Seeker, Champion of Dusk, both of those want more creatures. Same with Legion's Landing. Land. Yay. Finally. So Bellhaunt's worse against Mortify, but if they if they want to keep Mortify to kill Bellhaunt, they have to discard something else. Which I'll take that. It's worse against Mortify than Sarah for the skills would be, though. So we're going to take 5, go to 11. Draw land. Okay. Massacre Girl away the board. Then they have a Sanctum Seeker. Then how am I dealing with the Sanctum Seeker? With something with like Liliana or something. I could. Instead of Massacre Girling away the board, I could Soren minus four, get back Bell Hunt. Bell Hunt, discard Sanctum Seeker, gain three life. But then my Soren's gone. But then I don't know how they're winning from there. That honestly may be the better play. No, it's Masker Girl. Ne neither one of those, like, both of these plays are very good for me, basically. Neither one was bad. What's up, kitty? So you go to colonize new planets and have to fight off local alien type things and other human factions and stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess I could have attacked first with the spirit and dealt one point of damage. I'm kind of bad at those attacks. Yeah, I don't. We'll see if that one, you know, them being at 17 makes a difference in this game. I don't think it will at all, but basically that was just, <laughs> but yeah, I could have just attacked for one. Certainly. Hmm. All right. 
Temple of Skylance. Bottom. Hooray! Well, besides the one little little flyer deck that matched up super well against us, our deck's been really impressive. Besides that, it's been out grinding everything. Uh, of course, as we talked about plenty of times, I don't want to face Scape Shift. I don't think our Scape Shift matchup's going to be too good. Hey, yo, Silver. Welcome to the chat, and thanks for that sub there. You are amazing. Thank you very much. No, escape shift. No. Well, darn. Whoa, no land? And no... Like, they shocked in here. I was expecting Growth Spiral, and then more lands, and a bunch more lands, and me being dead here in a little bit. But none of that happened. They're just discarding cards. We have a shot. Oh. Marset. That's... Not a card you usually see in Scape Shift decks. Hmm. This is Bant Planeswalkers. So it's like just kind of like Bant Planeswalker control. I'm known for my excellent timing. Here we go. Probably has some fogs. You just let me Maybe wins through. with like Tamio and milling them a bunch and like Jace milling themselves out. I'm basically getting these, this Cavalier Knight back in because it's just four power. Just just more power than these things. Could have Settle the Wreckage in a deck like this. Bond of Flourishing is pretty sweet. That's a way to hit land drops. Finally use that Dovin's Veto they shocked in for on turn two. In case of another Wrath. We'll get the Midnight Reaper out here. All right, draw some cards. My heart it's gonna be ticking up. They're like pretty close to being dead. Usually I'd be minusing here and getting Midnight Reaper back. But they're just like really close to being dead. T 
tempted to build vampires first because it takes less wild cards and grind the and then grind the team or extinction deck. Yeah, that's that's definitely an option. The vampire deck is you know, one of the very best in the format. Vampires is really good. So yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. I guess they do have this crappy land. Stand by and watch. I've got it. Hmm. So one, two, three. So I just do three damage. This is hardly my worst defeat. I demand servitude. Hone your prowess. With eight seismic shifts in the sideboard <laughs> for the Teaver Extinction deck? Okay. That's pretty sweet. I can no longer stand by and watch. <sighs> Should have minus Anything or in last turn, not plus. Hmm. Whoa, what? Oh, they get to untap two lands with the fairy. Okay. I must train harder. Root Snare rotates out too, right? Yeah, that card rotates out. Oh, Root Snare was reprinted? In Ravnica Allegiance, lame. Hurry. Let us see if your talents are worth cataloging. Probably just minus four root snare. Okay, they're gonna get cleansing nova. Well, that's also fine. All right, new, new hand. There we go. Liliana's good. There we go. Playcrafter. 
Plague Crafter is pretty perfect. That's the card we need to see. is easily agitated our time together is okay for drink. four five six seven eight so eight mana to work with so play crafter is three hunted witness seraph Could see sacrificing the spirit token to keep Hunted Witness around in case of another wrath. Sure, let's do that. Um, I'll play that, play this. All right, so getting rid of Legion's End and a bunch of lands. We can still sacrifice the Play Crafter. Yeah, we can still sacrifice the Play Crafter to Cavalier Knight if we choose to. You would keep Legion? I don't think our opponent has any targets for Legion. This isn't a but I guess it's win. it's possible they do. I've got time. So I have nine mana. I know I'm losing out by, on the, the lifelink by not playing Soren first, but I want to see just if this Haunted Witness connects. It's only okay. a matter of time. The ringing of my sword is your death knell. Keeping the ability to get Playcrafter back. Maybe I should have just played Seraph last turn and kept the Soren Playcrafter available. I am not going to Honestly, yeah, I probably should have just played Seraph. Yeah, I'll be surprised if we lose this. It's possible, you know, like we don't, you know, don't know what's going to happen, but I'll be surprised if we lose. Yep, should have played Seraph. <laughs> hey, Bradero. My reckoning will come one day. Let's see. Let's just check. Should have seen that coming. Yep, they're staying alive. There are 
are so many miss with thoughtfulness before action. Tamio gets back fog. Yeah, like the the playing playing the Soren when I did may really cost us, honestly. Instead of playing Seraph of the Scales. Because I needed to play Soren and immediately get back uh, play Crafter. I needed to do that. And then my Liliana got countered, so now I can't sacrifice my Cavalier of Night. <laughs> yeah, our opponent has gained a ridiculous amount of life from that, uh, from, from these lands. I don't know. These, these things that I'm playing, like, besides the Doom Whisperer is going to set up my draw step. The other things, um, you know, even if they have a, a sweeper, like, they make a bunch of 1-1s one for me. To the library. Basically, I need to find Playcrafter. Or Soren. How many Sorens do I got left? One Soren. Oh, Tamio blinks Playcrafter? That's right. Oh, I'm kind of dead. I forgot about Tamio shutting down Playcrafter. Well, then I'm pretty dead here, then. This will come in handy. Trust me, I have yeah, I don't know if I can beat Tamio. Dang it, Tamio.
I know, if we had an Elder Spell, that'd be nice. Uh, Tamio. Why does Tamio have to shut me down so hard? It's a matter of give and take. I mean, I'm hoping my opponent minus threes the Tamio for root, root Snare. That's what I'm hoping. I don't. I can't really play Soren. I don't think because the little Teferi can bounce the Prison Realm on the Midnight Reaper and Prison Realm my Soren. our future. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Hmm. What a mess I made. They're worried about the reason why they got rid of Tamio is because, like, with that minus, because I guess they didn't have removal in their hand, so they're worried if, if they just tick up Tamio, then, um, all right, that should do it. Then, um, but they're worried about then I have like all those creatures that can attack and kill their Jace. Yeah, couldn't really double play Crafter because that Narset on one loyalty. Let's slow this down. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Keep up the pace. It's a prison realms, huh? So I think I I think I made a couple of incorrect plays in that game. Um I figured that out. Okay. Anyway, let's see. So, Legion's End, Priest, um, Ashiok's like interesting. Ashok's very good against Tamio. 
And you see like them rebuying fogs and stuff like that is really important. Everything here is pretty good. Like, I guess I could cut Hunted Witness because it's just a one drop, but it's not a bad card. Yeah, maybe I should be bringing in Ashiox. I don't know. Ashiox also just kind of helps get them towards their goal of milling themselves out. So I don't know. I don't... I'd want to play a couple more games really first to see if I'd really want to bring in Ashiok or not. Um, trying it without Ashiok. I guess this hand's really not very good. Has Duress, Tithe Taker, and that's it. Well, that's good. Got rid of that as Kanta. That's good. Yeah, Hawkeye was up a lot earlier, but not right now. Um, I guess we're like we're gonna have to trade with the seal away. I'm not sure how I want to do it. Like, do I want to just play Playcrafter right now? And sacrifice the Tithe Taker so they don't get to take it? I guess so. Of course, Tithe Taker makes the seal away cost three mana on my turn. That's why they couldn't do it. They'd have to, you know, on their turn, seal away. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> or I just turned on seal away. They didn't even have a land drop. Well, that Playcrafter play looks silly now. Well, they could have sealed away on their turn, though. Yeah, they would have been able to seal away on their turn, so, yeah, that's that's fine. Alright, we want to draw... A 4-drop or a black mana source? Want to draw Swamp or 4-drop? Alright, now we just want to draw land. Um. <laughs> My 1-1. One, one. All right, so we know they have more Prison Realms in hand. That's why they're doing that. They're getting the Scry in. They certainly have another one. So I feel like if I draw a Swamp, I should probably just play Cavalier Knight instead of Liliana. Oh, my gosh. Oh, why can't you be Ashiok? <laughs> the third Cavalier Knight? Well, there's basically nothing in my deck that I can't cast. Like, Liliana and Cavalier Knight are the only two cards possible in my deck that I can't cast, and so, obviously, those were our last two draws. <laughs> we have one Command the Dreadhorde that we just boarded in. Never mind, we can't cast that also. I wonder why they wanted Prison Realm so bad. 
or why that was their card they they wanted. The past is never forgotten. I am not going to sit this one out. Um, obviously, I regret not sideboarding out Cavalier of Night for how this game's played. Like this card is just laughable. Like we just have dead cards in our hand. It's so bad. So <clears throat> if I play this, if I would play this matchup again, I would be taking out the Cavalier Knights. I think I would win this this match again if we played. You know, if we just start over, play another match. I'm very confident that I would win. Um, I think I could have made some better dis decisions game one. And we also no, had Playcrafter. Our Playcrafter was down at the bottom of the library, but I could have made some better decisions game one. And game two here, I don't think I should have kept my hand one. I think I should have mulliganed. And two, I should have taken out Cavalier Knight. So learn quite a bit. With that being said, you never know. Command the Dreadhorde. Could do some work. You never know. The vast amount of enchantments that our opponent's playing is, is bad for us, though, of course. Just so many enchantments. And I do not have I think you will find my note. much enchantment hate at all. <laughs> oh, thanks, Fairmount. Yeah, I try to stay composed. <laughs> you would have rage scooped already. Yeah. I can see that. Basically, I'm just hoping my opponent doesn't have a, be a, a third counterspell. Idea. They've already gone through two Dovin's Vetoes. It's like, how many counterspells are they really playing? Like, probably not that many. So, four... Uh, four, nine... Plus 3 is 12, plus 4 is 16, 18. Okay, so now, for my excellent timing. Well, you can only do one thing, that's minus. Hone your prowess. You can... You three-third from the top? I can't draw an extra card because of this Narset. Okay, well, they scoop it up. Why was there a Midnight Reaper out of my deck? A Midnight Reaper should definitely still be in there. Yeah, like, I'm just not playing, like, Mortifies and things like that that destroy enchantments, so, like, that's... Certainly a, a bad matchup for us, the enchantment heavy deck. Yeah, I, I took four of their planeswalkers with Command the Dread Horde and they scooped. I think my plan was to tuck Tamio and just mill two cards over and maybe minus the. Minus my Tamio and grab Command the Dreadhorde back. 
Missed the yoinking. Yeah, we got to yoink four planeswalkers. Thanks to their Tamiyo filling their graveyard up. I, I just want to keep this hand. Why do I have to get rid of two cards? Dispark, yeah, if I go Dispark land, I'm just worried about actually casting stuff. I'm not going to get rid of a land. Um... Planes, what? Plane, Playcrafter to Spark? Playcrafter Type Taker? Well, it looks like I should have got rid of Duress. They have Veil of Summer. Should have ditched her ass. Oh, yeah, I have no board presence. Yeah. The focus and discipline put thoughtfulness before action. So I have another Narset, a couple prison realms. Bleh. I'm not taking Veil of Summer, of course. Well, I guess I could take Veil of Summer so that Dispark hits. I'll just take that thing. Meditate and prepare. It is an honor to meet you. I want them to take up. Darn it, they're smart. My research has been compromised. No tail should be discarded. At least we played around that veil somewhere perfectly. So that's good. Ugh, bad thing is I'm not being these prison realms. Bad news. Silica Bell Haunts would be good cards to be drawn. Time for a break. All right, well, this is this is not good. Let us march into battle and make new comrades. So it would have definitely been easier if we had all seven cards <laughs> instead of five if we would have just had this playcrafter tithe taker. Our life would have definitely been easier. How disappointing. But Duress and Dispark were both pretty good. 
I mean, I guess the two of them together only took out a Tamiyo, I suppose. At the end of the day. This is a loss. <laughs> My army will envelop this. <laughs> Rise. <laughs> you know what? I'm not done yet. That's more like it. It'll take us a little bit to truly figure out if we've lost this or not. But it is of a No oh, defeat. What a drag. I mean, this doesn't really matter. I mean, they have another Narset. Another day, Kerr. Only time will tell. Okay, so three and two. Every pebble is a soldier in my army. There's a lot of a lot of cards you can play in Orzhov decks, and the cards that I have here are not cards that you know are tuned for that matchup. You know, I don't have I don't have enchantment removal. You know, enchantment removal would have been awesome. I don't have Elder Spell. <laughs> that would have been awesome. You know, I don't, I don't have the spell for the, the cards for that matchup. <clears throat> but oh well. Um, anyway, so that's Orzhov Sacrifice. Played a lot of really fun games with the deck. Uh, went pretty well overall, uh, going three and two and losing to to two decks that you know are not really ones that you see too much of, but had some some cards that really lined up well against us. Whether it was like the cheap, a bunch of really cheap flyers that lined up really well against us, or a whole bunch of enchantment removal um, that lined up against us, you know, that happens. Uh, Seraph of the Scales was, was definitely good. Bell Hunt was is just kind of always good. I, I kind of want to just put Bell Hunts in the main deck. Um, been thinking about that, like maybe cutting back a Liliana, maybe maybe like don't play like the Doom Whisper or the Liliana. Um, get a bunch of bell haunts in the main it's unclear like even like those games like there's sometimes like against like the green deck there's sometimes the priest of forgotten gods is just insane and just completely annihilates the opponent there's a lot of other times though there's a lot of matches where priest of forgotten gods is not a card that you really need to be playing at all um and so I'm not sure if, like, you know, like, if we just went bigger and didn't play Hunted Witness, Priest of Forgotten Gods, you know, then play, like, instead of that, played a little bit more two and three mana removal, like Legion's Ends, Mortifies, stuff like that. Um, and uh, and then, you know, had, like, Bell Haunts in there also. Uh, you know, I guess in that scenario, you're probably not playing Cavalier or Knight. You know, basically just, you know, changes up the deck. Make it, like, an Orzov. Uh, you know, probably a command the Dreadhorde deck or something, or you know, something like that. Wouldn't be the same kind of deck, but wonder how that would really look or so. Like Bell Hunt's just always really impressive. Hey, good brother. 
Um, I did have I I did think about playing Mortify instead of this Legion's End here and ended up going with the Legion's End. But yeah, yep, Mortify is a card that. Like, that's the thing. There's, like, too many good black and white <laughs> cards. Like, you know, you just have to kind of pick which ones you want to go with. There's a lot of great ones. You know, Oath of Kaya, Mortify, or, or two that we are just talking about there. Elder Spell as well. You know, I'm not playing Elder Spells. And those Noxious Grasp. Noxious Grasp is another one that would have been awesome in that matchup. Like, there's, there's a lot of good spells. <laughs> so there we go. Anyway, Orzhov Sacrifice... Pretty sweet deck here. This kicks off our rotation proof uh, Monday here. So yeah, this is what we're doing each Monday through August. So the four Mondays in August. I guess I said 20 before. I guess it's 16. So we'll have 16 ro rotation proof decks. I'll make four new ones each Monday. And this is our first one. So if you're watching it later on YouTube, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And let me know what you think about the deck and the format and everything in the comments. But thanks for watching. Orzov Sacrifice here, and I will see you for the next video.